This is a recording of The Tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark by William Shakespeare, Act 1, Scene 3, A Room. Enter Laertes and Ophelia, his sister. Laertes, my necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And, sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Ophelia, do you doubt that? Laertes, for Hamlet and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of permi nature, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. Ophelia. No more but so? Laertes. Think it no more, for nature crescent does not grow alone in thews and bulk, but as this temple waxes, the inward service of the mind and soul grows wide withal. Perhaps he loves you now, and now no soil nor cot doth besmirch the virtue of his will, but you must fear his greatness weighed. His will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. And therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it as he in this particular act and place may give his saying deed, which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes withal. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain if with too credent ear you list his songs or lose your heart or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered in importunity. Fear it, Ophelia, fear it, my dear sister, and keep you in the rear of your affection out of the shot and danger of desire. The chariotist maid is prodigal enough. If she unmask her beauty to the moon, virtue itself scapes not calumnious strokes. The canker galls the infants of the spring too oft before their buttons be disclosed. And in the morn and liquid dew of youth, contagious blastments are most imminent. Be wary then, best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. Ophelia. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good to my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whiles, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance, treads and wrecks not his own reed. Enter Polonius. Laertes. Oh, fear me not, I stay too long, but here my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Polonius. Yet here, Laertes? Aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessings with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory, look thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged courage. Beware of entrance to a quarrel. But being in, bearest that thou opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. 
Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. And they in France of the best rank and station are of a most select and generous chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulleth edge of husbandry. This above all to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season this in thee. Laertes, most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. Polonius, the time invites you. Go, your servants tend. Laertes, farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. Ophelia, tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Laertes, farewell. Exit, Laertes. Polonius, what is it, Ophelia, he hath said to you? Ophelia, so please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Polonius, Mary, well be thought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me, and that, in a way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly, as it behooves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. Ophelia. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Polonius. Affection, pooh! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? Ophelia, I do not know, my lord. What should I think? Polonius, Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby. That you have ten these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase. Tendering it thus, you'll tender me a fool. Ophelia. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. Polonius. Aye, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. Ophelia. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Polonius. I springs to catch woodcocks, I do know, when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, extinct in both. Even in their promise, as it is a making, you must not take for fire. From this time, be something scanter of your maiden presence. Set your in treatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet believes so much in him that he is young, and with a larger tether may he walk than, be, than may be given you. In few, Orphelia, do not believe his vows, for they are brokers, not of that dye which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits breathing like sanctified and pious bonds, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. So to it I charge you, come your ways. Ophelia, I shall obey, my lord. Act 1, Scene 4, A Guard Platform. Enter Hamlet, Horatio, and Marcellus. Hamlet. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. Horatio. 
It is a nipping and an eager air. Hamlet, what hour now? Horatio, I think it lacks of twelve. Marcellus, no, it is struck. Horatio, indeed, I heard it not. It then draws near the season, wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. A flourish of trumpets and two pieces go off. What does this mean, my lord? Hamlet, the king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse. Keeps wassail and the swaggering upheels reels, and he drains his draughts of Rhenish down. The kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Horatio, is it a custom? Hamlet, aye, Mary, it is, but to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed revel east and west makes us traduced and taxed off other nations. They clip us drunkards and with swinish phrase soil our addition. And indeed it takes from our achievements, though performed at height, the pith and marrow of our attribute. So oft it chances in particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them, as in their birth, wherein they are not guilty, since nature cannot choose his origin by the o'ergrowth of some complexion, oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason, or by some habit that too much over leavens the form of plausive manners, that these men carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, being nature's livery or fortune's star. Their virtues else, be they as pure as grace, as infinite as man may undergo, shall, in the general censure, take corruption from that particular fault. The dram of evil doth all the noble substance of a doubt to his own scandal. Enter ghost. Horatio. Look, my lord, it comes. Hamlet. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why thy canonized bones hurst in death have burst their cerements, why the sepulchre wherein we saw thee quietly interred hath oped his ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee upon it up again. What may this mean that thou, dead course, again in complete steel, revisits thus the glimpses of the moon, making night hideous, and we fools of nature so horridly to shake our disposition with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls. Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? Ghost beckons Hamlet. Horatio, it beckons you to go away with it, as if it some impartment did desire to you alone. Marcellus, look with what Courteous action, it waves you to a more removed ground, but do not go with it. Horatio, no, by no means. Hamlet, it will not speak. Then I will follow it. Horatio, do not, my lord. Hamlet, why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do to that? Being a thing immortal as itself, it waves me forth. I'll follow it. Horatio. What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff, that beetles o'er his base into the sea, and there assumes some other horrible form, which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it. The very place put toys of desperation without more motive, into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it roar beneath. 
Hamlet. It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. Marcellus. You shall not go, my lord. Hamlet. Hold off your hands. Horatio. Be ruled, you shall not go. Hamlet. My fate cries out and makes each pretty arte in his body as hardy as the Neman lion's nerve. Still I am called. And hand me, gentlemen, by heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say, away, go on, I'll follow thee. Exit ghost and Hamlet. Horatio. He waxes desperate with imagination. Marcellus. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him? Horatio. Have after. To what issue will this come? Marcellus. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Horatio. Heaven will direct it. Marcellus. Nay, let's follow him. Act 1, Scene 5. The Battlements. Enter Ghost and Hamlet. Hamlet. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Ghost, mark me, Hamlet, I will. Ghost, my hour is almost come, when I to sufferous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Hamlet, alas, poor ghost. Ghost, pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Hamlet, Speak, I am bound to hear, ghost. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear, Hamlet. What, ghost? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up my soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand and end like quills upon the fearful porpentine. But this eternal blazon must not be. To ears of flesh and blood, list, List, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love. Hamlet, O oh God. Ghost, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Hamlet, murder? Ghost, murder most foul as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. Hamlet, Haste me to know it that I, with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. Ghost, I find thee apt, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on Leith Wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this? Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rankly abused. But know, thy noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Hamlet. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle? Ghost. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wits, with traitor. Taurus gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, won to his shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. O oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, methinks, I scent the morning air, brief let me be. 
sleeping within my orchard, my customs always of the afternoon upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed Hibona in a vial and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body and with a sudden vigor it doth passet and curd like eager droppings into milk the thin and wholesome blood so did it mind, and a most instant tetter barked about most laser-like with vile and loathsome crust all my smooth body. Thus was I, sleeping, by my brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannailed, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsomever thou pursues this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glow-warm shows the mountain to be near and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Remember me. Exit. Hamlet. Oh, all you host of heaven, oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fie, hold, hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee? I, thou poor ghost. Wiles, memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Ye, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records. All souls of books all forms, all pressures past, that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven, O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. My tables, meet it is I set it down, that one may smile, and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. Right. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word, it is adieu, adieu, remember me. I haven't sworn. Horatio and Marcellus within. My lord, my lord. Enter Horatio and Marcellus. Marcellus. Lord Hamlet. Horatio. Heaven, secure him. Hamlet, so be it. Marcellus, illo ho, ho, my lord. Hamlet, illo ho, ho, boy, come, bird, come. Marcellus, how is it, my noble lord? Horatio, what news, my lord? Hamlet, oh, wonderful, Horatio. Good, my lord, tell it. Hamlet, no, you will reveal it. Horatio, not I, my lord, by heaven. Marcellus, nor I, my lord. Hamlet, how say you then? Would heart of man once think it, but you'll be secret? Both, I, by heaven, my lord. Hamlet, there's never a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an arrant knave. Horatio, there needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Hamlet, why, right, you are in the right, and so, without more circumstance at all, I would it fit that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire, shall point you, for every man hath business and desire, such as it is, and for my own poor part, look you. I'll go pray. Horatio, 
These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. Hamlet. I am sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. Horatio. There's no offense, my lord. Hamlet. Yes, by St. Patrick, there is, Horatio, and much offense, too, touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost that let me tell you. From your desire to know what is between us, O oh, air master, as you may, and now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. Horatio. What is it, my lord? We will. Hamlet, never make known what you have seen tonight. Both, my lord, we will not. Hamlet, nay, but swear it. Horatio, my lord, not I, in faith. Marcellus, nor I, my lord, in faith. Hamlet, upon my sword. Marcellus, we have sworn, my lord, already. Hamlet, indeed, upon my sword, indeed ghost cries under the stage ghost swear hamlet ha ha boy sayest thou so art thou there true penny come on you hear this fellow in the cellarage consent to swear horatio propose the er oath my lord hamlet never to speak of this that you have seen swear by my sword ghost beneath Swear, Hamlet, hic et ubic, then we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay your hands again upon my sword. Swear by my sword, never to speak of this that you have heard. Ghost beneath, swear by his sword. Hamlet, well said, old mole, canst work I the earth so fast? A worthy pioneer. Once more remove, good friends. Horatio. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. Hamlet. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come. Here as before, never, so help you mercy. How strange or odd. Some air I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put an antic disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, never shall with arms encumbered thus or this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase, as, well, well, we know, or we could, and if we would, or if we list to speak, or there be, and if they might, or such ambiguous giving out, to note that you know aught of me, do this swear, so grace and mercy at your most need help you, ghost beneath, swear, they swear, Hamlet, rest, rest, perturbed spirit, so gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you, and what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do it express his love and friending to you. God willing shall not lack. Let us go in together and steal your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint, O cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Nay, come, let's go together. <laughs>